Hey everyone, so in this video we will cover the part of drill down report creation. We will go through all the applicable steps and we will skip certain parts to just save the time. But first off, what we need to do is load in some data in a brand new Power BI report. So that's what I'm gonna do, so let's switch to the screen. So what we see here is just a brand new Power BI report, there's no data added to it, and the first thing I need to do is load in some data, right? Makes sense. So we're gonna go here, add the data, we can in this case use a web connector, and I'm gonna paste in the URL to the available source. The sources that we're using are gonna be available also in the sample report that you can download below, so you can easily reference those. So clicking OK, waiting for the data to load. Once we have the navigator open, we select the two tables that we're going to load in, click on load, and now the waiting game begins. Now once the data is loaded in, next thing we need to do is create some additional measures. In this case, we're going to start off with just creating a basic sum measure, but afterwards we can add everything that's necessary for the creation of the report. So let's just go here, right click, new measure, and we're going to start up to write it. So tell them ARR. Now, once the measures have been created, the next part is going to be the actual report creation. But before that, there's usually a couple of things we recommend users to do. One of them is applying a theme. The themes allow you to load in colors, font sizes, backgrounds, and a lot of different other things. In order to do that, you just go under view, and you can see here is a already pre-configured list. You can open up and choose a color palette. But if you have something like corporate guidelines on, or style guidelines on how to follow report building where you have typical colors you usually use, then you can just create your own theme file. You do that, you apply it to the report, and it just saves you a lot of time. Now, in this case, I'm just going to open up and apply a theme file just to save up certain aspects of it. Now, once the theme file has been applied, there's usually a couple other things I recommend to go th going through. One of them is going to be the backgrounds. In cases where the background is just a plain color or just a small gradient, it's fine. You can add it as a part of the, the theme file itself. But if you have a report which is a multi-page report, and in those pages you actually have different layouts, it's a bit difficult. Let's say like that. If you just have a plain background, it doesn't really mess anything up, right? But if you have different images that you're using and you have a pre-configured layout for it, in those cases, it's just a lot easier to go from page to page and apply it manually. Same applies for canvas sizes. If you have certain pages which do need to have a different aspect ratio for whatever reason, you can do that manually and adjust it based on the use case. So now it's time to apply all of these settings to the actual report. So first of all, I'm gonna define the canvas size. So I go under the formatting options, canvas settings, and I'm gonna choose a custom dimension. I'm going to say the width is going to be 1920 by 1080. There we go. The next thing is I have already a pre-configured background that I'm going to apply here. So canvas background, I'm not going to apply any specific color, but I'm just going to use an image here. So the one I want to look for is ARR version 4, and I want to make sure that the image itself is not transparent. I want it to be in the forefront of everything. So adding these two things allowed me to pre-configure the layout. So now it's time to add the visuals. The first thing we're going to focus on is going to be the cards. So we're going to add a card visual right here. And we're going to add the measure. And this one, we're going to have the cumulative ARR. Let's go over right here. So the next, once we create the measure itself, let's go and customize it. Let's go for call out values. And what we have here is going to be the font families coming from the theme file. The size of it is going to be 26. Style is going to be bold. Uh, the color is going to be a custom hex code like this. There we go. Display units and value decimals, I'm not going to really adjust. It's working just fine. As for the category labels, I want to make it a little bit more visible. So let's make it a 14. The color, again, I'm going to adjust to the custom font. Not font, sorry, but the color. There we go. Now, once that is set, I want to make sure that the background is disabled so it doesn't cover it. And now I'm just going to manually readjust the size of the visual. I'm not going to be pixel perfect right now because that I can do afterwards. Right now I just want to make the general layout of things and then go through the report once again and cover all the nuances of the design, like covering all the namings of things and so forth to just make it look very nice. All right, now we, once we added the first visual, it's a card, it's the same principle. The same size boxes are going to be applied right here. So what I can do is just copy paste it four times, adjust the layout of them, the position of them, 
and then afterwards just basically manually adjust the measures that are going to be used within it. So what I'm basically trying to say here is don't try to do something multiple times if you don't have to. If you create one card which does what you already need, then afterwards just copy paste it and positioning and those sort of things can be adjusted afterwards. It's the main general idea that you're trying to do here first to just make sure you're on the right track with the report design itself. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the visual building part. What we're gonna start off is by building a timeline visual. We're gonna add that to the canvas. We're gonna resize it to make it fit nice and neatly. And then we're gonna add all the necessary data. We're gonna start off with the date hierarchy. Here you can add either a predefined hierarchy or just add individual columns like I'm doing in this case. Year, column, quarter, month, and day. Now, as far as the date field itself goes, just add it right here on date value. Now the two series or the values that I wanna showcase here are going to be delta ARR and cumulative delta without the current period. There you go, the initial chart has been created and now it's gonna be time to format it based on our needs that are coming from the design that the team has created. So let's open up the formatting options and adjust the visual based on our needs. In this case, first of all, we need to adjust the font sizing unit and we're gonna change it from pixels to points. Remember that the formatting options are gonna change from visual to visual, so just keep that in mind. All right, so we adjusted the font setting, now we're gonna be enabling the legend, then afterwards we're gonna go into the primary y-axis, and here there's gonna be a couple of changes. First of all, we need to add a title, so here we're gonna have a mount USD, there we go. We're gonna adjust the color, which is gonna be again a custom hex code, there we go. What else? We need to adjust also the style of it, and make it in bold, there we go. Axis size, we're gonna change it to 100 just to give the axis itself a little bit more room. We're gonna adjust the font size of it, forgot this one, 14, there we go. And what else? That's, that's good, that's good. Scale adjustment tolerance, we're gonna decrease to 0 0.2. Ticks, we wanna remove, so we're gonna decrease the width to a zero. And the rest looks good. All right, perfect. So we can close primary y-axis and focus on the next one. The next one is going to be series configuration. So let's open up series one configuration. And the first thing we're gonna change is gonna be the name of it. We're gonna rename this to be Delta ARR. And we're gonna add a dollar sign right here as well, perfect. What else we're gonna be doing here is we afterwards also gonna customize the labels. So I just wanna enable this already right here. Now let's go down, let's see what else is here. This looks good, this looks good. We need to add conditional formatting. That's one of the things that they also wanna add. Let's enable conditional formatting, leave all the color options as it is, as it seems good, but the upper color origin is actually gonna be a constant. And we're gonna keep it as a zero, so basically if ARR is above zero, it's gonna be in green, if it's below, it's gonna be in red. That looks good. The next one is gonna be the series value labels. Here, we're gonna change the position to outside top. There we go. Going forward, we need to adjust the label border radius to five, the label padding to three. What else is here? Font sizes looks good. These look good. The font color is going to be white. The background is gonna be black. The background opacity, we're gonna to switch to a 90. The background outline can keep it white, but change the opacity to zero. So even if there is some background line, you don't really see it. We're gonna adjust this one, the background line width to a 10. Let's go further, what else is here? We don't need any shadows. We're not gonna adjust the shadow placements or anything, so this looks good. Now let's close the series one value labels, close the series two configurations, which is just a little bit more cleaner. Now, what else is left here is gonna be the series two configuration. So let's go here, open it up, and apply a very similar logic, right? So we're gonna customize the value red labels right here. We're gonna keep the column as is. Do we need to adjust anything here? We do, we actually wanna create a stack of these. So we're gonna change the stack number from two to one. There we go, now we have a stacked column. And we also wanna change the order of them. So we always want to cumulative part to be at the bottom and the delta to be at the top. So what I'm gonna do here is adjust the display order. So I'm saying for the visual to, hey, place this below the expected delta. There we go. This, everything else looks good. We don't need any conditional formatting. So we can close series configuration, open up the value labels part. And here there's again gonna be a couple of changes. The label position is gonna be inside top. Positioning is gonna be centered. 
If we go here, border radius, same logic as before. The radius is going to be 5, the padding is going to be on 3, the font size stays at 10, the font color is going to be white, the background is going to be in black color, the pad, sorry, not the padding, but the background opacity is going to be at 90%, the line opacity is going to be a 0, the actual line width is going to be a 10, and the rest of the settings can stay as is. So we can close it, and we're done with one part of it. Now, what else is left here is I want to make sure that whenever I have the negative values that they stack properly. So one of the things that I want to adjust is open up the stack settings and disable this part right here, which is separate negative values. So I want to make sure that even though they are negative, they're not starting from a zero, but they're starting from the top value where that's actually located at. So let's go with right here. And the initial part of the chart is done. One thing left, yeah, one thing I forgot, is to disable the title, since we're going to be using external elements for the dynamic titling systems. All right, that's it for the timeline visual. All right, after the timeline visual, we're going to be adding another one. And in this case, it's going to be a donut chart. So let's go here into the visualization pane and add a donut chart. Let's resize it. We can add it in the top right corner. So let's resize it. Let's move it right here do some minor adjustments, there we go. And as far as the data goes, this is gonna have only three different columns in it. So we're gonna have two different drill down levels. In this case, we're gonna be adding a category and a product as a second layer. There we go. And as far as the value goes, we're gonna be using Delta ARR. Perfect. Now, in order to make it more visible, we're gonna be making slight adjustments. So let's go into the formatting options and start off with the top. So these ones as is, advanced settings, we're gonna go here and change it again from pixels to points, there we go. Now open up the donut part and adjust the outer radius to 80 and the inner radius to 60. There we go. Now what's afterwards, doo -doo 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 -doo. Keep these as is, these look good. We don't need a legend, detail labels. We don't really need any adjustments here. Uh, we don't need a toolbar, so disable this one. What else is here? Fill color settings. As for the fill colors, what we're gonna be doing in this case is we're actually gonna be adding a base fill color. So we're gonna be choosing one from the color palette we already provided, and it's gonna be this one right here, this one. There we go. What else here? Any other gradient um, adjustments like lightness, hue, or anything else can be done afterwards based on the design. So this one looks good. What else is here? General, we also want to disable the title because like I said, we're going to be using external elements for that. There you go. The donut chart is ready and the two visuals are available for you. So now when you have these two visuals, you actually can start to experience the drill down effect for the reports. So the visuals now allow me to do this. As soon as I choose one of the slices in the donut chart, it drills down and it filters out everything else in the report page. If I want to drill down, let's say, into 2022, perfect, there we go. I want to choose just a couple of months from the end. I want to highlight them or open up a daily view for them. You have the possibility to do that. And I can do this cr crisscross and essentially just go in from different dimensions, different perspectives, and adjust the answers based on the questions that you get asked from the audience. To get back, I'm just going to click reset on this one. And I'm going to click on the middle part here to go one layer up. Now what else? We're going to cut off a little bit of time here. And we're going to showcase you the end results. We're going to be adding things like just dynamic titles, some buttons, adjust the other visuals based on the same principles. But like I said, you're going to have the sample report available for you. So you can download it, go through it, and make sure you follow all the instructions. And here you can see the end result. So what we essentially did is we added the additional visuals and formatted them in the same principle as we did with the timeline and the donut chart. We added the labels and everything that's necessary. We also added a little bit of dynamic title system here. So whenever a user selects, for example, a single category, you can see it right here, and it adds essentially a breadcrumb system. It allows the user to understand what exactly has been filtered and what is it looking at. We also added a reset button right here in the top right corner. And what it allows you to do is you get quickly back to the initial view whenever you want to. So if you have used multiple filters through different visuals, through different dimensions, and you just get lost in the process, you can easily get back to the initial view and just start over step by step. And now once we have all the report built, we can actually start to reap the benefits of a drill down report. So one of the things that we're going to be looking into right now is going to be the ease of use and exploration. And how it works is pretty simple. Click on one of the slices of a donut chart and see the information getting cross-filtered. Let's say I'm interested in 2022. I click on it, I drill down, and I'm now on the quarterly level. 
I look at them and say, hmm, I'm actually interested in the last two quarters of 2022. I highlight them and then I click on the selection to drill down onto a monthly basis for those two quarters. Now, how do I get back? Pretty simple. For the visuals, you also have the option to enable a reset for the individual use. So I can do that right here on the timeline. But for other visuals, let's say I don't have it enabled. So I can always use the reset button to just get back to the initial view. And now when you have all of that set, you're pretty much set to go and reap the, all of the benefits that the drill down reports have to offer. Also, make sure to follow us on other social media platforms for more drill down report related content.